After a long, blindfolded journey, three teams were dropped in the desert with no idea where they were. <laughs> Just as I suspected, we're in the middle of bloody nowhere. They were discovered by nomads. Hello. 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 Ruth is soaking up the spirit of Africa. When I get back to school, I'm going to say to the kids, if they ask me where I've been, I'll say, I went to Timbuktu. We'll take the piss out of you, no one certainly will. James's public school confidence and Harry's natural charm makes them more than a match for the locals. Nana thinks she can blag her way back to London. Stuart has never travelled outside Europe before. They soon discovered Timbuktu was no throbbing metropolis. Kind of disappointed, really. I was hoping that we'd find someone who could actually book a cab. <laughs> no, it's not that easy, is it? As Mel and Ruth set off on their truck journey west, the other two teams settled down for the night in Timbuktu. It's too dangerous to cross the Sahara, so on the next leg of the journey, all three teams must head to Bamako, the capital of Mali. Ruth and Mel have blown the last of their money hitching a ride on a truck, but it's making slow progress and stops at almost every village. We got here last night, 10 o'clock. It's now basically 10 hours later. And again, we're no closer. But well, hopefully, everyone's been having the same problems. If they have managed to get the car and had a night at a hotel, then, you know, good luck to them, really. Yeah, they're going to smell a lot better than we do. Yeah, they certainly But, well, you know, the locals might be put off like that. You never know. James and Harry are still in Timbuktu. And how are you feeling today? Uh, well, I feel a bit rammed, actually, because I, 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 sli I slept on the floor last night. But I tried to slip in beside um, Harry over there. <laughs> and um, she gave me pretty short shrift, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too right. <laughs> James and Harry have managed to blag a free flight by promising football kit to the local team captain, who also happens to work for Air Mali. Um. Uh, bon, je, je vais, je vais... Our strategy's got to be that we've got to aim high and compromise rather than try and blag our way onto the back of a cargo truck or a train or whatever. Let's see if we can get onto Concorde and then settle with a you know propeller plane, and that's got to be the way to go. Yeah, I've got a freebie, that's the good thing. Eight hours. Yeah. Loving this. And also, <laughs> we're, we're flying in the style to which we've been accustomed so far. While James settles down to a nap before cocktails, on the hot and dusty road below, Nana and Stuart are bouncing across the bush. Oh. 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 We've been on this thing for hours. Last night, we haven't slept at all. So I'm knackered and stinking. And there's dust everywhere. There's a huge crack in the window. This is scaring the shit out of me, literally. It's running off my leg now. Getting sensation back. I've packed like loads of facial scrubs and moisturise and cream and everything, but I haven't even washed for like two or three days now. I'm not used to looking like this at all. It's a hard, it's a hard journey. Isn't it? It's like just holding on for your life. <laughs> Literally. I've counted four, four nearly near crashes, near head on crashes we've had. Really. The worst thing is the um, sitting in the front. You can see the craters before it happens. Yeah. With the diarrhea thing. But their journey is pure luxury compared to Mel and Ruth's. It's 34 degrees and they're battling through a locust storm. Oh, yeah, you're a fucking locust. You're a bird. No. 
No, nah, I'm on serious here. How pretty they are. <laughs> I've roughed it all over the world, but this is certainly the worst thing that I've ever done. I mean, I've hitchhiked with all sorts of lorry drivers, all sorts of people, but I've never sat on the top of a damn lorry in this sort of heat. But still, I mean, it's fair enough. We seem to be going somewhere, at least we're moving and all that. We're still in the lead, we've not passed anybody yet. And, you know, we're seeing what it's actually like on the ground. We're seeing this is the way that everybody else around here travels. The flight to Bamako puts James and Harry in the lead. Despite travelling overland, Nana and Stuart arrive shortly afterwards. Mel and Ruth, who have taken the slower road, are trailing as the teams converge on the capital. By now the teams are exhausted and would give anything for a wash and a sleep. Nana and Stuart have found just the place. We are at the most beautiful hotel that we have ever seen. It's gorgeous, isn't it? We are just trying to see the, di the director, to see if we can stay here for one night and, um, yeah, tell them why. I'm not going to the pool. Let, let's not get too excited I'm now. Gonna in, I'm going to go jump in the pool before we leave. <laughs> Sorry, I'm swimming in the pool. Yes, well. Bon, the direction is d'accord. I agree for all of you say. Yeah? Yeah. Um, oui. I, I get a room for you. Oh. We have to be between. between. Between, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. cool. Is enough. Okay. Um, Merci. Hey. Merci. <laughs> <laughs> <I will. laughs> Look at this whistle. <laughs> we are so bad, didn't we? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, TV! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who did he? Who did he? Who did he? Look at the bar. There's a bar here as well. Oh, oh, oh. I love this place. Oh. I love, I love, I love, I love this place. <laughs> Just up the road, there's another large hotel. And guess who's staying here? Hi. What's going on? We have blagged a room at this hotel, Hotel de la Magdi. We're going to share a room. Huh? And we're going to look around the hotel, give a bit of a guide. This is a magnificent hotel. Also, it's a double bed, so I think we'd be a lot more comfortable in here. Do you reckon? Yeah, I do. We can. Um... I'm on so far. This is much more us, dude. You made it. How is it? Oh, really good. Bon. It's, it's a pitch battle, this race, but um, we need to move as quickly as we possibly can, but, you know, we should never, ever, ever sacrifice any form of luxury that comes our way. Arriving penniless, starving and caked in dirt, Mel and Ruth have finally made it to the capital. They have no time for beds or baths. We've got to get moving straight away. We've got to get a train straight away. We can't stop around. We've got no money, but that's no big deal. We'll just go and sell some stuff at the station. If we pay straight to Dakar, it's still going to be double what we've got. Fair enough, we've got other things to swap and that, and if we find a nice friendly porter, we can sort that out. But... Basically, if we wait for the next train, which is going to be tomorrow morning, that effectively means spending the night here. If we were going to sleep anywhere near here, it would have to be in serious shifts. It's not something that I particularly want to do. We're an absolute target. The Bamako to Dakar Express takes only two days, but none of the teams can afford the £25 tickets. Nana and Stuart have only got £40 left between them, and so they are trying to obtain free train tickets. So it must be train station. Nine o'clock. They've arranged the tickets for us. The hotel travel agency thinks they might be able to help, but the manager's not there, and so Nana must try to get hold of him on the phone. The line is busy. You can't get him in this time. Yeah. Okay. At the moment, he is their only hope. I mean, we just have to get on that train tomorrow. The main thing is we do not want to pay for it. Hello? Oh, he's in the shower. 
Hey, you're going to be shouting. Uh, no phone calls then? No, nothing. Bonjour. Hello? Bonjour, je voudrais parler à Monsieur Bukuri Sidibe, s'il vous plaît. C'est moi. Oh, hello, it's Nana here. Ah, how are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, give me just uh, half hour. Okay, we see you soon. We see you, okay? Take care then. Okay, bye bye. 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 Results! <laughs> We're really sorry, I'm really sorry I fell in the bar. What's up the restaurant over here? Get your priority. Now I'm going to rush, please, you me. <laughs> But um, there's nothing that we can do until Saturday, to which is tomorrow, until we get the train. So, might as well enjoy it. There's no point roughing it. You don't have to do it like that. I mean, you can do it like this. Squatting in the squalor of the station concourse, Mel and Ruth are desperate to flog anything to raise money for their train fares. One of those? Yeah. Um, that's non-stop lighter. That lights for six hours, yeah? Ali, who they've just met at the station, has agreed to help. Your man Ali here is uh, helping us shift all of our gear, basically, because we need money to get on this train and we have absolutely...